I'd like to thank the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal for sponsoring my channel. They do a ton for the leather crafting community and have a great publication. I highly suggest checking them out. Hi, I'm Tony Allen Bernier, and today we're going to make a short brimmed cap. Now, I sew it out of leather. I do the lining out of a fabric, but it works great for fabric and leather. You can make a fitted cap using the four different sizes, or you can go a size bigger or several bigger, depending on how much bunching you want in the back. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that and how to fit the cap to whoever's going to be wearing it. So what you could do is make it just a little bit bigger than you would think you would need, and then when you're fitting it, bunch that back up just a little bit, and it'll still look like a fitted cap while fitting just perfect. This is the front panel of the cap. I decided to put some interfacing on it so it'll have kind of some rigidity to it. And this is just the iron-on stuff. Usually I like to cut a piece a little bit bigger and iron it to the back of a large piece before I cut stuff out. But uh, this is probably thick enough and it'll be all right. Just doing it this way. Let it cool off and I can pull the paper backing off of that. And I cut it out and peeled that paper backing off here and you can see it's got just a little bit more stiffness to it. That way it'll help the hat in the front hold that shape a little bit. I'll put a little patch on here somewhere. Before I get started sewing all the parts together, I marked where I wanted this little tag and this is the front panel. So I took into consideration how far up the seam allowances are going to be and kind of put this off into the corner a little bit. I like to use a tool to mark where the stitches are going to be first. Then I'll just place this needle in the holes as I go to make sure it's real accurate. I have another machine I usually use for this. It's an old shoe patcher machine. But I will show you how I would do it on this. I'll get that needle coming down. But before it goes into the leather, pop this up. I think I'll start on the bottom here. Start in the hole. Let that pressure foot go down. I try to have it lined up. And I'm going to go close. But then right before I get in there, lift that pressure foot up. But then I drop it right away again. Make sure I'm lined up right. And since I'm going around the corner, before I drop that pressure foot, I'm going to turn this so the next hole is right in line with where this is going to go. That way I'm not creating any excess slack with the thread. If you don't drop the pressure foot enough, it's not going to pull up right. It'll start pulling this up off the table and you're going to get too much slack in the thread. And on this, instead of doing all the back stitching, I will stop on the hole I started on and then pull the thread through the back and tie it by hand. It'll just look a lot cleaner. So you're not going to want to, if you're doing this, cut it real close. You're going to need to leave enough thread so you can just pull it back to the back side and tie it off. That's how I'll do little patches and things. First thing I'll do is take these two top panels and make sure you're marking the fronts. Put the good sides together and clip these. I almost always start by doing one in each corner to line everything up. Since you aren't easing the pattern, which is getting some slack work together versus the secondary part, since we're not doing that on this, 
you don't have to go nuts with the clips. I always go overboard anyways, but you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. Make sure you got your tension dialed in on your machine first. And you can see I have the 3 8 inch seam allowance marked with the corner of a piece of tape. And that corner is directly straight across from where the needle is going into the leather. That way I know exactly where I want this at the 3 8 inch mark. If I go straight, you're not really sure where to line it up at that 3 8 inch. Also, by having the point like that, if you start to go over a little bit, you're going to know exactly how far over you are and how much you're going to need to compensate to get it back in track. Anytime I'm sewing too, I make sure I don't have stuff hanging over the edge of the table because it'll grab and pull and then pull this out of whack. Anytime you stop, not so much for this part because you don't really have to fight it to line anything up. But anytime I stop, I try to keep that needle down in the leather. That way it really is holding everything exactly where I need it to stay while I'm messing around with clips or whatever. And when I can, I like to, like you just saw, I went one stitch just over the edge. That way, when I'm sewing the next parts together, this doesn't splay apart at all right there. The only thing is, it can grab and start to bunch that up a little bit sometimes when you do that. I usually leave a little bit of the threads hanging too, and anything sticking out when the cap's done, I'll trim. That way, nothing starts to loosen up on me as I'm sewing all the stuff together. So the next step, which you don't have to do, is I'm going to use some double stick basting tape just so I can make sure I get these nice and pressed down and it helps give the hat a little bit of stiffness to it. I want to give this a pre-fold a little bit before I peel that backing off and I'm not pulling the leather apart at all I'm just squeezing it to get that fold in that way it looks nice on that seam and you won't see much thread if at all popping through right there I find if I try to get it on the end, it doesn't always peel off as easily than if I come off the end a little bit and grab it from the side. But when I'm getting these to stick down, I do that same thing I did for the folds. I'm just pressing my fingers together. And I skip like every inch or so, so that the slack is even throughout. If you just keep going down, eventually you'll build up slack and you're going to have some folds down here. So I'll start by just kind of going every inch or so. And I go back and even out that slack. You can peel this back a little bit if you need to fix something up. For the top stitch, I suggest grabbing a point on your pressure foot to line up right with that seam. 
and instead of just going down one side and then moving it over to go down the other, I'll flip this around so I can use that exact same spot. When I do my back stitching, I make sure it's back that 3 8 inch seam allowance. That way it'll be hidden when we start sewing parts together. But you want to make sure before you hit reverse that the needle's starting to come back on its way up. Make sure that needle's down in there as I adjust. I'm not pulling, I'm just letting the machine do all the work and grab what it needs. Now after you run that one, you could just move this to the side and go on the other side, but I find to get it more accurate, I'll flip this around so I can use that exact same part of the pressure foot as my guide. And again, I'm making sure that back stitch is past that 3 8 inch so it'll be hidden when I sew the next parts on. Okay, now we can do the front and back panel, and you can see where I marked it got covered up. So what I can do, since the front panel is wider than the back panel, I can just fold this over, find out which side is wider, and that'll tell me which one is the front. So this is the front right here. I'll sew the front on first, and this is the top, so the top is going to be sewn down to here. You can see I have that center mark. Make sure you're lining up that center mark with the very center of that seam. So I'll do the one clip, and then I'll get the corners done. And there might be a tiny bit of easing on this piece. So what I'll do is lay this down. I make sure again that I have the same amount of slack on each side of that. And that little bit of easing will help round off that seam. So I'll press down to even all that out and place another clip right in the middle. And then fill in the gaps one at a time doing the same. So I'm starting on this corner, I like to grab that clip and just flip it around to the side when I'm holding it exactly where I want it to be. And when you're getting up to stuff like this, you want to go slow, make sure that goes underneath that pressure foot before you just rip right past there. It's important when you're back stitching too that you try to hit right on that same line as the stitches before that because if you're off you're going to have trouble splaying this out to get a nice clean top stitch. So if you're using a real thick interfacing so that you can put a nice patch on here and it stays nice and rigid I would suggest folding both seam allowances up and just putting one top stitch around this panel but mine's still relatively floppy, so I'll be splaying them to each side still. And before I put the tape on, I'm gonna just splay these out and get a good fold going. So where I got 
that multiple layer seam folded, sometimes it's a good idea to just give it a couple light taps. With a little hammer or something. To really make sure that folds in there nice. And you got a lot of thick layers, it will start ripping through the material though, so you gotta be careful with that. I press that seam allowance down, same as before. And I like to have it concave the opposite direction as I'm feeding this through here. And exactly as I did before again, and use that same spot on that pressure foot so all these seams look very similar. So I'll use that same spot on the pressure foot again. If you're using a thicker leather, sometimes it's good to slow down right at that point where the pressure foot could get kicked off of all those layers. Maybe turn this by hand, make sure you're getting that needle placed right where it needs to go. Sometimes when it's too thick there too, it won't kick underneath that pressure foot, so you'll have to kind of help it along a little bit. But this stuff's thin enough to where it's doing just fine. So now since you're getting some slack and stuff, you got to be real careful that this doesn't get folded underneath there and sewn through. I've done that many times, sewing upholstery cushions and things. And again here it gets real thick, so you might want to slow down and make sure it gets in there right. Any of this stuff starts catching on things, it could start pulling this all of a sudden. Put your stitches off alignment. With the easing, it gives it just a little bit more roundness coming off of that seam. Helps with the shape of the cap. Okay, so here is the back panel. And again, make sure you're marking the top and the bottom. The top is what's going to get sewn to the main section here. And that center line should be marked again. So I'll clip it right on that. But sometimes you'll get a little bit more seam allowance on one side versus the other. So I'll line these corners up and get some clips on there and take a look and see if there's more slack on one side versus the other. This back panel really doesn't have any easing much at all, if any. So I can tell this is, the bobbin thread is getting kind of curly. That means it's starting to run out. But if I'm just sewing two parts together, I'm not worried about it, but I will check that before I start doing top stitches. The last thing you want to do is run out of thread halfway through a top stitch. It's going to make it a little bit more of a pain to try to get those to look real clean. When I get to corners, sometimes I like to have it lined up. I'll throw a clip down here before I pull this one off, just so stuff stays aligned. Alright, this is getting pretty curly. I think before I do this top stitching, I'm going to get a fresh bobbin in there. You can see I already got one of the side panels on. So we'll do this one now. So that front, the curved side, this is the front panel. We're going to start right on this corner, put a couple clips on here. 
and then we're going to clip the other corner. There's going to be just a little bit of easing we'll have to do with this piece. So while you were marking and cutting parts out, you will have noticed that center mark on this piece and the center mark on that one. We're going to match those two up. That'll be our starting point. So now we're going to have to ease this in. So I want to check and get that same amount of slack on both sides and put a clip right in the middle here. pretty good. And then just keep filling that in. Make sure it's even across the whole side. same to this other side. You can just get it close, throw a clip on there, and then take a look and adjust it if you need to. And when I sew these two parts together, I like to put this curved side panel down. It's this top panel that's going to have all these excess folds in this material that we're going to have to make sure we direct the right way and that bottom will stay nice and flat. see that it's going to start to bunch up a little bit here. Alright, so we can just keep pulling it this way, but then you're going to have a bunch of slack down here eventually to deal with and that's not going to work. So from this curve here, we're going to pull that straight, and don't pull too hard, you'll slide these out from each other. We're going to pull straight from this curve and slowly make sure we flatten this out and work that excess material underneath that pressure foot. And all the folds will be coming straight across from this radius here. Tooling by Color, one of the most comprehensive tooling instructional sets for figure and pictorial carving, using a minimal amount of tools to show you the techniques. Some of the techniques covered will be faces, open oceans, buildings, rocks, anatomy, mist and clouds, flowing water, hands, trees, bark, textures, and much more. I don't teach you how to tool just one image. I give you a complete understanding on how to approach or tool any art to realistically represent it three-dimensionally in leather. This understanding also comes in handy when embossing or using other mediums. Most artwork has some degree of perspective and realism in it, whether it be hyper-realistic or a more stylized representation. Pictorial, figure, and traditional style tooling could all benefit from learning how to properly tool things in a more realistic styled imagery. The DVDs explain proper swivel knife cutting depth, the different types of double bevels and how to use them, how to use the depth we have to work with efficiently, and the understanding and use of the fragmented or low-poly observative method. 
Even though it comes with all the patterns for the seven lessons on tracing film, the books are printed on one side of the page for easy tracing when using a light table. There's also several different types of guides, one for swivel knife cutting depth, color-coded tooling reference guides, shaded tooling depth guides, and fragmentated or low poly reference guides. I teach from many different angles using said guides. This way we attack the process in as many ways as possible, helping to interpret anything it is you want to tool. The introduction section starts with some simple perspective style boxes. Then we work our way up in a systematic approach to the more complex. We take each new thing we learn and use that to move forward. Learning how to properly render perspective style images gives us the opportunity to add more dimensions to our tooling abilities. Adapting this perspective style tooling to pictorial and figure carving helps us grasp the proper way to render images in a more realistic dimensional representation. Pulling this straight from that radius and then I'm flattening this out so no folds are going to be sewn in. Any folds are past where that seam is going to be. I want it to be nice and flat right where we're going to put that seam. Putting the basting tape on this, you can't really lay this flat. It's kind of tricky. I like to have the cap sitting kind of in, in this three dimensional shape and just place this tape on here as I'm holding it. To make this turn, I'm putting slack in the tape so that the shortest side will stick to the cap and then this excess will just press down. As soon as we peel this backing off, that tape's real thin, it's not going to show. Otherwise, if you try to pull this tape tight in order to get it flat, you're going to be stretching the material out and the cap's going to be all wonky. Really press this on there. You can see it looks kind of weird because that tape wants to bunch up. But once we peel these off of here, it'll be fine. But first, I'm going to start this fold so it's already kind of in there. And if you need to tap it where you got these extra seams with a little hammer or something, do that. That'll help make that fold nice and sharp. Just like I did before. Just kind of press here and there. Don't keep pressing all the way straight across, I'm leaving little gaps so the excess material has somewhere to be and then I'll go back and kind of break that fold in half 
try to minimize any of that. Top stitch this just like we did all the other seams. And then I'll show you how to do the lining. When you're adjusting, make sure that needle's down in the leather. And you may need to slow down when you're going over all these other seams. And you can just sew the bill on and put that sweatband in. I usually like to put some lining in my caps. And basically, you're going to use the exact same pattern and you're going to use your lining material. And if you want to sew it on this Cobra 26, you're going to need something thicker, like an upholstery material or something. That real thin, silky stuff will not go through here. You'll need like a standard little sewing machine or something. So I'll sew that up, exact same process material. And when you're cutting out of the material, you have to make sure the pattern itself will have grain lines on it. And will have a little definition of what you need to do with those lines. If you sewed a lining, you're going to need to put it in. And I like to start at the front of the cap because I feel like that's the widest part because it flares out a little bit more. So I'll start at the front of the cap and you're going to want to make sure the two seams match up as closely as you can with these two seams. And then you kind of puff it up into the cap and make sure it's as flush as you can get it as you keep adding clips around the perimeter. Just a single one in the back here if you center it but make sure it's pressed up into the cap as far as you can get it Once I get it pretty well situated, I'll add some extra clips just to make sure. And check again to make sure the lining is pressed all the way up into the cap. You can see I had just a little bit of slack to work in. I'm going to get that spread out just a little bit better.
I think I just had a little bit bigger seam allowance on the lining. So it just had a tiny bit of slack to kind of work in around. And then I'll put a stitch just right on the edge holding those two together and trim that excess lining off. But before I do that, I'm going to pull the table off of here. This can be done on any standard sewing machine too. And if you're wanting to know how to make caps on just a regular flatbed machine, uh, check out my flat cap video. That will show you how to sew caps and also how to maneuver the brims when you're sewing those into the caps. So you don't actually have to have one of these cylinder arm machines. Now the lining will be held in there real straight while we sew that brim on. So before we finish up the cap, we're going to need the brim sewn up here. And you can see one part is shorter than the other. It's smaller so that we can ease this fabric together and that'll give us enough slack to wrap around the front of the brim insert so we have a nice fold and a seam. So what I'll do first is get each corner clipped. And then find the center and just pull that forward. get it evened up. I like to flip it over so the bigger piece is on top and you can see the slack a little bit better. Make sure it's the same on both sides. And then you're just going to pick this off one clip at a time. By going right in the center Keep putting clips right in the middle, even it out on each side, throw a clip in there. I like to use a lot of clips when I'm doing any type of easing, it really helps hold everything in place. that to the other side and then we're going to sew that seam but it's not going to be a 3 8 inch seam we're going to bring it in a little bit so we don't have as much slack in the seam allowance to fold underneath you can already see how this kind of comes up and leaves a nice space for that plastic insert to rest so instead of going the 3 8 I'll do like a 2 8 inch seam allowance so I'll just ride on this groove right here, because that's about a 2 8 inch seam allowance. We don't want to go that full 3 8 inch.
see that this top piece here is the one with the slack in it. But after you flip it inside out, you'll still be able to tell which one is the longer piece because it sticks out past there. When you have this seam lined up, it's going to come out past the other one. So that one is what's going to wrap around to the short side. The smaller side is the side that the seam allowance is going to be on. So just fold it all over to the smaller side. And you're going to want about three-fourths to an inch on each side. I like to feel, make sure that seam is, make sure the seam allowance is all on the short side and then start tightening this up. And you're going to want that seam right on the edge. So I'll put a couple clips on and then check the plastic and make sure there's the same amount of excess on each side. Make sure it's kind of stretched a little bit and you got the same amount of excess on each side. And when I stretch it, I like to grab this in my fingers and then press on the plastic with my thumb. You can stick a folder or something or a modeling spoon in there if you need to work that seam allowance. Sometimes it'll have a, a thick fold. You need to kind of spread that fold out a little bit. I start putting clips on the end, making sure that that's flush with the edge. And if you keep the clips back, right on the seam allowance, towards the edge there, you can use the clips to get rid of some of those folds underneath, and you'll be able to sew through this without taking the clips off, unless you use a guide like I'm going to be using. So sometimes they'll want to come and fold over too much. You'll need to make sure you kind of stretch these just enough so that it's snug around the edge too. If you pull too much, you're going to start splaying those stitches open. And if it doesn't look like it wants to stay flat across the brim, you can grab a couple clips and just get them butted right up against the plastic. So you know when you sew across here, it's going to be nice and flat. So you can see right there I got a little bit of a wrinkle. So I'll just pull these just a little bit and get a clip right on the edge of that plastic to hold it. You can do this with the table on. I'm going to pop the table off and then get ready to sew these to the caps as well. When I'm setting up this guide I like to pop a couple clips off. I like the first stitch line to be close to that seam allowance but I don't like to go up on top of the edge. So I'll get relatively close and then with these dials you always want to be dialing it back away so that the pressure doesn't make it slip within these threads after you tighten it. So whenever I start sewing my brims, I start right on the corner. This is all going to be hidden later on. 
That way it holds all these layers nice and tight when we get to that stage. And then I quickly have it meet up with that roller before I hit the plastic. And I just got up onto the plastic so I'll keep that pressure against the roller. another step where you really need to make sure that needles down you need to make sure that needles down in there otherwise you're going to lose that straight line and these are actually the new plastic brim inserts I started making I really like how they hold their shape my plastic brim inserts sometimes it's nice to have a little piece of scrap so you can test and get your tension dialed in for this as well if you send me a message when you buy the brim inserts I might have some scraps laying around I could send you so you have a couple pieces of that to practice on to get your tension dialed in as soon as I feel I get off the plastic a couple stitches I'm gonna move back towards this corner First row I'll put a second row in maybe like three-fourths to an inch back if you start getting too close and putting a lot in it gets hard to keep them straight so I'll just keep dialing this back until it looks good to me right there looks good and this time I'll just butt it up to that guide and start off of the plastic you can push to bunch this up on top of the brim so make sure it's pulled snug not stretching it but pulled snug so you won't get any wrinkles on top and sometimes this will want to kick up and ride on top of here so I'll usually keep a finger right here just to make sure it stays down far enough to stay on that guide put the back stitches past the plastic the brim's all done and what I did was I watched that plastic and trimmed 3 8 inch from that plastic all the way around just to simplify you don't have to do that but it makes it just a little bit easier and what I'll do is I'll try to line this up as best I can watching these two seams so I put it right up against the plastic we're gonna have a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this back side as well so you can just line these edges up I'll put just a couple on and then check again to make sure I'm right in the middle here looks like I'm a little bit off I think I'll put a couple more on here and see if I can see it better and just keep working your way from the center pulling this and you don't want to stretch it too hard because the front of the cap will distort see if I pull this up a little 
it'll line up it'll line up a little bit easier if you kind of pull that up like that and check again make sure you got this as centered as you can get it I'm just scooting it over one clip at a time so I'm just trying to get it as close as I can and then I'll really fine-tune it here and get that seam allowance right on the nose so what I'll do is hold this up, line it up as best I can centered, put a couple clips in the middle, work my way out to each side, and take a look at these seams. And if it's off a little bit, pop a couple of these off, scoot it a little bit, and you'll take a look. And if you see some wrinkles across this seam here, like that's almost worth popping out but you'll see it start to bunch you want to pull these back apart and kind of give it a little bit of a stretch when you clip these and what I'm going to do is put a stitch pretty close to that plastic just to hold everything down I'm not worried about getting it right up butted up against that plastic I'll do that when I sew the sweatband on so I'm staying kind of close to the edge right here so that this will get hidden when I sew the sweatband on Now, I'm going to get up real close to this plastic. I think what I'll do is ride that side of the pressure foot on there. The reason I don't do this sometimes is I'll put it back further so that when I sew the sweatband on, the stitches will definitely be hidden. But if you're careful, you should be able to do it. If I lose the plastic a little, I like to grab something just to get a visual on where it is again. rims on there. So the last thing I'm going to do is put this sweatband material in. I like to start at the back, find the center, and go past it enough so I know I have plenty to deal with later. So I'll find the center go past it so I know I'll have enough to cut and fold and get under there when I get back around to the other side and 3 8 inch seam allowance place that right on the edge of the sweatband material we want to just sew the very edge of this down to the cap here you can lift this up take a look it usually rides dead center on this. Check off and make sure you're holding that same distance. 
And before you get too close to the bill, you can kind of flip it inside out a little bit so you can get it lined up straight across here so you know right where it needs to end up when you get there. So it's a nice ease in case there's any discrepancies in the seam allowance there. I like to give this just a little bit of a stretch when I hop up onto the brim here. Oh, sometimes it doesn't want to pop up there. Giving this a little release so it gets up on there can help. against the plastic here and trying to get that seam as close to the plastic as I can without hopping up onto it. You don't want to stretch this a whole bunch. You don't want to give it slack, but you don't want to stretch it either because then it'll be too tight and leave this imprint on your forehead. Make sure nothing's folded underneath there. Once I'm getting close to the other side of the brim, I want to make sure it's pulled so that there's no slack folding up in there at all. And I'll hold underneath and then pinch it right here. Before I hop off of that brim, I'm going to make sure this is aligned back a little bit and give it just a little bit of a stretch. And then let the slack go back in there. I don't want to stretch this out. The thing with this stuff too is if it's, if the hat's too big, you can always undo the back a little pull this a little tighter and put some stretch in. You could put a little bit of bunching in the back. And if you're going to do some bunching in the back, you're going to want to start this past that seam and then finish that right at the other seam so that you can pull these together and you'll see how I seam them. Seam them and then stretch them out when you sew them. Then when you let go, it'll have a nice bunching in the back. But what I'm going to do is pop this off of here, cut these and figure out where I want that seam on the sweatband material to be. So I took that and folded it in and put a couple clips on there just so I could look and find right where that center is. And I use that seam here to hold this up. And then I clip them with a 3 h inch seam allowance. And when in doubt, you're always better off leaving a little extra and sewing them a little long. And what you're going to want to do is these will be to the inside. So I'll flip this back out. And then rotate that. Now, like I said, you're always better off sewing short and you can just sew it a little bit more until you get the right tension and then clip the, then you can clip the stitches on the inside and trim off any more excess. But if you go too short, there's not a whole lot you can do.
so that when you flip it, those will be hidden behind here. That should be a good length. Sometimes you want it just a little bit tighter because this tends to stretch out as it's going underneath the pressure foot. So I think I may tighten this up just a little bit here. And like I said, just go in a little bit. Leave them other stitches in there for now. And then I'll just use my seam ripper, get rid of those, and trim off the little bit of excess. So I tap those edges with a lighter real quick. And now you can see that I have to stretch it a little. Just a little bit of stretch will help so that this sweatband material won't bunch up. Just stretching and pulling this both both parts the leather underneath and the sweatband and that's that so I'll go through and trim any of the excess thread and stuff that's still sticking out fold this in and sometimes I'll tap it with a hammer a little bit to get that fold right where I want it to be. And you can, if you want, put a stitch right along this edge holding that fold. I usually don't. So what I did is I marked where that center was and clipped these 3 8 inch from that center, just past it, so I can put a little seam in there. So what I did is I made the seam so it's basically the size of the cap itself. And what I can do is have the person try this on and then I'll put the seam back and strip this one and trim the excess off have them try it on before I sew it to the back of the cap and once I get that fit right and I'll show you so I got the fit right and you can see there's a bunch of slack now but if I pull and stretch this out we can get this sewn and get a nice bunch in the back for like a one size fits all but this one is still fitted to the person. So I'll flip this out. Start my stitches right here. What I like to do too is bring the needle down and place it right in one of the other stitches to try to line them up. What I'm going to do first, before I pull these, make sure I'm centered on that with the 3 8 inch seam allowance, is I'm going to go right to this other side of this seam, because I don't want it bunching right across the seam. Right there. And then when I pull from this side, I'll grab right past that seam as well and then pull this make sure I got that seam allowance right what I'm doing is I'm pulling on the other side of here too I don't want this to have to pull all that I'm creating the tension and I'm just letting it guide through here You may need to slow down to make sure this hops up on those other layers. That seam allowance for the sweatband.
Yeah, usually I'll switch to like a white thread or something, but as long as your stitches are straight enough, you'll be fine. So the lining will decrease the size a little bit too, but you can see I got that nice bunching across the back right there. And another thing you can do, which I like to do, is put that fold where I want it and put a stop top stitch around. Make sure you get the fold right where you want it. And I'm going to place the needle right into one of those stitches on the end. So what I'm going to do again is stretch this out, but I make sure I get that fold right where I want it. And if you want, you can put a clip or a couple just to kind of help hold it. Find a spot as a guide for your seam allowance. You don't want that full 3 8 inch. You want it pretty close to the edge. And make sure you're stretching this out. What I'll do is I'll slow down and make sure this needle pops right on that stitch line from those decorative stitches there. And you don't want to back up until the needle starts to come back up. That way it looks real nice coming right up to those. And you'll have a nice bunched up one size fits all across the back there. <laughs> 